guys, today we're going to be painting and staining some apple boxes. If you don't know, apple boxes are a great tool for photographers to use in their studio for either elevating some items in their frame or using them for posing. I have 10 different techniques that we're going to try out today. I have no idea if they're going to work out, um, but we have some different stains, paints, scrapers, sanders, and uh, we're just going to see what works. So here are 10 ways that you can distress your apple boxes at home. Okay, so our first three methods for our apple boxes are regular paint, regular stain, and stain and paint while being weathered outside. So for our first method, this is just regular white paint, as flat as possible. I think that this might be ceiling paint, um, but it really doesn't matter. I think a lot of people get tripped up on what type of paint to use for anything. Um, you can use acrylic, you can use ceiling paint, you can use house paint. I would just recommend using a very matte paint. Anything shiny um, will definitely reflect light in your photos. I've also um, been using this one as a little watercolor board, so as you can see, it has like a lot of extra um, color on this. Um, so yeah, that is our first method. Our second is a, just a regular stain. The stain that I used for this um, was like a really dark brown stain. And as you can see, the texture of the green really comes through very well on this. The wear and tear has been about a year um, using these in the studio. So as you can see, it has a little bit of scuff marks, um, but for the most part, it's a brand new box. Uh, our last method, the third method, is actually regular paint and regular stain, pretty much the same type of paint and stain with these boxes, but they've been weathered outside for a period of time. These boxes also um, belong to Felix Kuhns. I'm grateful that he uh, let me show these off for this video, um, but they have such a beautiful character from being left outside. There's a lot of marks and wear and tear, and they're kind of splitting, and they have very chipped um, edges, really sanded down, super soft, um, and I just think that these look really beautiful um, in some images. So these are our first um, three methods. Okay, so for our fourth method of distressing and painting apple boxes, I actually did this one last year. It's basically just a stain. This stain actually, it's a Jacko Bean uh, wood finish stain. And also I painted a little bit of black acrylic over it too. And this is just a basic um, flat um, acrylic that you can get at the craft store. Um, and as you can see, it has kind of the stain coming through in some areas. Um, it's also been distressed a little bit also after a year's worth of being in the studio. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to hit it with different grits of sandpaper um, just to see if I can get even more texture. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into that. So for this fifth method, we have a uh, apple box right here that has just been stained. Um, again, it's been used for about a year, so it already has a little bit of distressing happening. Um, but I saw online that you can get these accessories for your drill to actually remove paint and stain and see if we can distress it a little bit more. Um, so I have no idea if this is gonna work out, uh, but let's try it. Okay, so right here we have our fourth method and our fifth method. Um, our fourth one, if you remember, was just our sandpaper and our fifth was with this drill sander and the accessories. I think that the major difference is obviously the sandpaper is a little bit more uniform in the scratches and actually the drill sander has a lot more um, randomized and more um, almost like a dotted texture as opposed to the scratches of the sandpaper. So for our sixth method, we're finally going to stain some boxes. I found this whitewash stain online and it looks like it's going to make this kind of pine color a little bit more white, which I'm really excited about. I've never tried this, so I'm not exactly sure how it's going to look, um, so I'm excited. Um, what you'll need is your box, some stain. We have a foam brush here and also just a regular paint brush. I think I'm mostly gonna be using the foam brush and just a little um, paint tin to pour in the stain. So we've just done one coat so far, and as you can see, the grain of the wood is actually coming through really nicely. It's definitely a lighter color than it was before, and I really like it. I think I might try one more coat after this dries, um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you the results. So for this next method, we're going to be using antiquing wax. Now, I've never used this before, but I have seen Felix use it, and it has this beautiful gray sheen. And so you're supposed to apply it with a rag, let it sit for five minutes, and then buff it off. Um, so I'm excited to see how this looks. 
So this is what it looks like in the end. It's a really light brown, beautiful kind of like blonde wood color. Um, I really like this. This is also after a one coat and I believe you can keep on adding coats to make it darker and have a little bit more sheen. Um, and that's also something to um, take into account too. This one has um, a little shine to it. Um, I don't think that it will come out in photos, but it is just something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, I think it looks really beautiful. So for this next one, I actually brought in Felix because he has done this before and has made this mysterious uh, potion we got here made out of vinegar and steel wool. Yes, right? yeah, you put, so this is the thing I found online <laughs> and I've been doing a lot of woodwork. So I mean, we've been talking about apple boxes for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. And um, this is, you just put, you get white wine, white wine vinegar mm -hmm. and you stick a bunch of steel wool in it and basically as it rusts, it creates this horrible Natural tincture stain. that will stain everything in its path. But <laughs> it's quite nice, nice for making a base layer. For the studio, you want it to look kind of old and rustic and I think that's literally, you're literally putting rust on, on it. it. So it looks like even after just a minute or so, there is some gray textures kind of poking through, yeah. um, even though it was very orange at first. So it is cool to see that over time, it's kind of like changing. Yeah, um, and I tried, I tried it with the wet rag, mm -hmm. and then also with a dry rag, you just get a little bit more of the texture. And if this is, this thing is like two years old, so it's a bit of an experiment. Oh yeah, you can see it. Mm. But as like it's lost some of its potency, I think it's rusted through. Um, but yeah, you definitely get a little bit of the texture out. Yeah. You could, could have it as a base. And then you'll see like you, when it dries, it'll like be a little bit dusty. So for this next technique, we're actually gonna try something I found online, which is putting either Vaseline or petroleum jelly on your wood, painting over it, and then scraping it off. Um, this will actually hopefully help um, the paint not stick to the wood so it shines through. So I'm actually gonna cover this dark stained box with a white paint and hope that the dark stain shines through. So I just finished scraping off some of this paint with the Vaseline. What I've noticed is that the places where I put a lot of Vaseline, they kind of come out more in spots as opposed to this effect, which was when it was just a very light coat. So I would definitely suggest doing very light coats um, instead of kind of globs. <laughs> so I might actually go over this one more time with paint and um, do a little bit more staining and um, finish it up that way. But just wanted to show you and give that tip. So for this next and last method, I'm going to also be doing the stain and paint technique, but instead of the Vaseline, I'm just gonna be scraping it off with little metal scrapers and sandpaper, just because maybe that will give us a more organic um, texture um, when we're scraping it off. I'm not exactly sure. This one is definitely going to be a play, so let's see what we get. It actually turned out really cool. I started with that gray stain, put some white paint over it with a brush, and then kind of quickly buffed it out with a rag, um, and it turned it into this beautiful light gray. I did try to use my scraper and my sandpaper to have some of the wood texture come through. It's very subtle. Um, I'm not sure if you can really see um, or if it'll come out in photos in the studio, um, but it does add um, a slight color variation here. You can see the pine color seeping through a little bit. Um, I really like this, actually. I wasn't sure how this one was gonna turn out, but um, I, like, I like what I see. So a couple notes on some of these methods. This first one that I did with the drill sander, actually I believe that this was method three or four, I wouldn't necessarily recommend to go out and buy the kit that I use just because it's very unpredictable and super scratchy. Um, I ended up just using it very sparingly just to give it um, a little bit of texture because I really liked the grain of this wood. And on this whitewash method, I would definitely recommend sanding after it because the texture is super rough. It kind of feels like you could almost get a splinter um, with this particular um, box brand and the whitewash brand. So that's all I would recommend with this. Next we have the antiquing wax, and this one I think is actually my favorite. It comes out so, so beautiful. It keeps the edges really dark and shows the texture really, really well. So I think that this one is definitely my favorite. 
So for our next one, the one that we did with Felix, that was the steel wool and vinegar, we actually did one side, if you remember, that was covered in water and then we put the mixture on. That side ended up being kind of like a greenish tint. And then the other side we did actually turned out a little bit more red. Um, and this is when we didn't add water before we put the mixture on. And I think that's really interesting that the colors were so vastly different. Um, another thing with this one is that the texture is also super rough, so I would definitely recommend sanding this down before you use it in your studio. So for this next one, this one was totally an experiment for me. If you remember, I started with a dark stain, put the Vaseline on in areas that I wanted the color to show through and then painted it white. The first attempt was definitely um, an, an experiment. Um, I think I did too much Vaseline in some areas, so it came out more spotted than chipped. So on the other side, I tried to do very little, and I think that looked ended, that ended up looking a lot better. Um, so yeah, that's definitely what I would recommend with this one, unless you're going for something super distressed. So with this last method, if you remember, we started with the gray stain and then a white paint over it, and then we're going to use the scraper to kind of scrape off that paint. What I ended up doing, and I think it works a little better, is doing a light wash of paint over the stain. And what I mean that is just adding a little bit of water and kind of buffing it into the box, and then using your scraper. I think that the texture ends up coming out a lot better in that case. And that's about it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you end up trying any of these methods, please feel free to comment and let me know how it goes. Also, if you have any other tips on ways that you can distress your Apple boxes, also add those in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.